We start with a point. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Rob Bryanton, and this is the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. And today we're going to look at an important question Is space time flat or curved? And the image we're looking at behind me is uh, generated by data from WMAP, the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe. According to WMAP's results, our universe is flat to within a 2% margin of possible error. Is our universe really flat? I believe that it isn't. Remember this, our universe is not just space. If you are traveling in space, you are really traveling in space-time unless you've discovered some way to instantly transport to a distant star using no time whatsoever. Here is one way I saw the concept of a perfectly flat universe within the multiverse explained. If space-time is absolutely flat, then if you were to set off in a rocket ship and travel in a single direction, you would eventually get to the universe that's just like the one you're in now, but where you got up an hour later this morning, or where Michael Jackson is still alive. And if you continued on this journey, eventually you would start getting to the other universes with different basic physical laws, the other universes of the multiverse. So, there is evidence that space-time is close to flat, but I still feel certain that it will be proved that there is a certain very small curvature to space-time, which is why our universe is not really infinite, it's finite but unbounded. It's like the old video games, where going off the top of the screen gets you to the bottom, or going off the left gets you to the right, or as we see on our own planet Earth here, traveling on the equator eventually gets you back to where you started. To continue the analogy, our observed space-time universe and its cosmic horizon would be a tiny dot in the middle of that video game screen. We talked about this in entries like finite but unbounded and an expanding 4D sphere, but some cosmologists say that if this dot representing our observable universe were the size of a quarter, this video game screen we're thinking about here would be the size of planet Earth. Now, in a finite but unbounded universe with a slight curvature, if you were to set off in a rocket ship and travel in one direction, you would traverse the finite but unbounded hypersphere of space-time and eventually end up back where you started. Or, with a slight change in trajectory, you would end up in the universe where you got up an hour later this morning, or where Michael Jackson is still alive, or any of the other possible versions of our universe that are part of the wave function of outcomes which could have or will have occurred for our particular universe with its locked-in fine structure constant. The other perfectly flat space-time explanation we looked at has its supporters, I think, because it still allows the viewpoint that free will is an illusion and everything is inevitable. If you eventually get to the universe where Michael Jackson is still alive using flat space-time, then where you get to is really completely unrelated and causally unconnected to our own version of space-time. Now, no wonder some people who are shown this theory reject the idea of parallel universe versions of our universe even existing. And where that model breaks down further for me is that we have to eventually encounter an edge to our space-time universe where the basic physical laws become fuzzy and we somehow transition into the space-time edge of a different universe with a different fine structure constant. The slightly curved space-time model works better for me because it seems much more likely that the universe where you got up an hour later this morning is directly connected to the universe we're in, and that the space-time tree of possible outcomes connected to now has its branches within the fifth dimension. It also explains why, no matter how far out into space-time we look, we're never going to see other universes with different physical laws because getting to those other universes would require extra-dimensional movement within the seventh dimension and above. Or to use the string theory perspective, it would require us to break out of the D7 brain our universe is embedded within, and arriving in a new point within that multiverse landscape would reveal some other universe that is apparently infinite within its version of space-time, but is really just as finite but unbounded as our own. One of my most discussed entries in the past year was an entry called Light Has No Speed. Next time we're going to look at a new entry which extends some of the ideas from that previous entry. It's called Photons and Free Will. I hope to see you then and enjoy the journey.